So good, we think we know what entropy is, the number of ways you can rearrange a system. We think it makes sense that entropy increases over time. What we're left to do is understand what this has to do with our experience of time in the everyday world. How does that help explain this asymmetry we have about the past versus the future, this feeling that we have that we're flowing through time? Well, let's just take one example. Here's my favorite example of an asymmetry. This is an asymmetry of prediction versus records. You're walking down the street, you look down the sidewalk, you see a broken egg. And we ask ourselves, because we're in a philosophical mood, what is the future of that egg likely to hold? You don't know, right? There's many different possible things that could happen to the egg. It could just sit there. It could be cleaned up by somebody. There could be a rainstorm washing it away. There's many possible futures open. But if you ask yourself, what does the past of that egg probably involve? With very high confidence, you will believe that there used to be an unbroken egg and it got dropped and it broke. So right away, just seeing this thing in the world right now, this artifact, broken egg on the sidewalk, you infer a difference between the past history of that egg and the future history of that egg. Why? Well, it's not because of the fundamental laws of physics. Given the configuration today, egg on the ground, messy, etc., there are many, many arrangements of the individual molecules that could account for that. And accordingly, there are many, many possible futures, as we said, many things could happen to the egg. If all you knew were the fundamental laws of physics, there is a precisely equal number of past things that the egg could have gone through. The conservation of information convinces us that the number of past possible histories of that egg is exactly equal to the number of future possible histories of that egg. But there is one big difference, that we know the universe started with the Big Bang, and that Big Bang had a very low entropy. This is what philosophers call the past hypothesis of low entropy in the universe. So we know two things. We know the current state of the egg, and we know the initial condition that we started with very low entropy. We, that's where the imbalance comes from. That's where we know a little bit something more about the past than about the future. And we can use that information to say, given the existence of a broken egg on the sidewalk today and the existence of a very, very low entropy Big Bang, we can infer that there used to be an unbroken egg. As you go through your life, as you are remembering things and predicting things about the future, you are constantly relying on the fact that the entropy of the universe was very low near the Big Bang. You might not have known that you are relying on that fact, but it's crucially important to how we live our lives.